Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Chemical process design and insight into distillation column design. In this video course, you will learn what are the design objectives of distillation column, insights into process design of distillation column, insights into mechanical design of distillation column, insights into trade design check. Please subscribe to the channel by subscribing. You will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Distillation column design. Before I go into the design aspects of a distillation column, let me first make you understand the design objectives. One, the function of a distillation column is to separate the given feed into its constituents using the relative volatility of the components. Hence, it is taken for granted that the feed rate, the compositions, and the operating conditions, either pressure or temperature of the feed is known. This is called feed specifications. Two, the column is designed to produce a distillate product per composition XD of the lake component and bottom product of composition XB of the lake component. These are distillate and bottom product specifications. At this point, design objective must be clear as to what percentage of the product is desired as liquid product. It could be 100% liquid or partial liquid and partial vapor. Several distillation processes produce partial liquid product. This subject will lead you to next decision point, total condenser or partial condenser. Next is reboiler type. The reboiler is usually a partial vapor reboiler. The next step in the design process is to decide on the column operating pressure at the top. You have two options, operate the column at pressure or under vacuum. Operate the column under vacuum if the products are heat sensitive. In certain cases of close boiling mixes, the relative volatility will be higher at vacuum conditions. This must be evaluated and decided. In either case, the decision must be made at this point as to at what vacuum or pressure the column should be designed to operate. It depends on the type of utilities available for condensation. If cooling water is considered, determine the column pressure. If the calculated pressure is reasonable, then refrigerant is not needed. If the calculated pressure is very high, select a refrigerant. The decision to use cooling water or refrigerant is an optimization exercise. Higher the column pressure, greater the wall thickness of the column and greater the capital cost. But what is cheap and abundantly available in many places, whereas refrigerant needs a refrigeration system which consumes power. We have now decided on the major inputs required to begin the design process. There are two parts of the distillation column design, process design and mechanical design. Both are functions of process design engineer. Insights into distillation column design, process design. Process design involves determination of the following, the number of theoretical stages and actual stages stream flows including reflex ratio, heat duties, reboiler and condenser duties. The steps involved in the process design of distillation column including reboiler heat duty and condenser heat duty is provided in the diagram below. Reboiler heat duty is one of the most important design parameter because it has major bearing on the operating cost and capital cost of the system. The process design steps are fix the column specification for the feed split, find out the minimum reflex ratio or minimum, take actual or equal to 1.2 times or minimum, 
determine the number of theoretic stages and look at the feed stage. From the energy balance, you get the reboiler duty and condenser duty. Now determine the overall column efficiency EO. Then determine the actual number of stages. The actual number of stages is equal to NTS divided by EO. Mechanical design of distillation column. Having given the insights into the process design, let me give you the insights into the mechanical design of distillation column. In mechanical design step, the design activities include select the type of column internals, calculate the column diameter, calculate the column height, select the type of reboiler and condenser. Select the type of column internals. Selection of column internal is an important design activity. First is to decide the type of internal, tray or packing. Next question that arises is what type of tray in case of tray column and what type of packing in case of packed column. Several factors have to be considered in making the choice tray or packing. Watch the video titled Choice of Tray vs Packing under the playlist Distillation to know more on this. Column Diameter Column diameter is an important design parameter. To compute the column diameter, the area of cross section of the column has to be calculated first. The most important factors that determine the column area are vapor and liquid loading and their physical properties. This video leads you to get an insight into the mechanical design of track column. Packed column will be discussed separately. Calculation of column diameter. To calculate the column diameter, you have to first find out the column area. The figure below shows the column cross section area. The tower cross section is divided into three sections entering downcomer area, exiting downcomer area, and active area. The net area is the area through which the vapor flows through the column in the inductory spacing. The net area is required is dependent on the vapor load on the column. The net area should be such that the column does not flood at the rated vapor flow rate. This net area is related to flooding velocity. The flooding velocity is calculated and the net area is calculated such that the active velocity in the tower is 70% of the flooding velocity. Flooding velocity is a function of the following factors. Vapor liquid loading on the tray, tray spacing, physical properties such as densities and foaming nature of the liquid. Number of tray pauses, multiple pause tray. As the liquid loading on the tray is increased, the column operation with a single downcomer faces instability. The normal engineering guideline is to select a number of tray pauses when the tray loading increases beyond certain limit. As the tray pause increases, the tray diameter will increase. Hence, this is another design check that needs to be done before proceeding to compute the column area. The tower diameter is then calculated from the tower area. Once the tray diameter has been calculated, the tray panel layout parameters can be decided. The figure below shows the tray panel layout parameters, which include hole diameter, hole pitch, tray spacing, wear height, wear length, downcomer clearance. This design step is called column detail engineering. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your spec e-learn channel is one-stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now. Column height. 
Another design output parameter is the column height. The height of a tray column is obtained from the number of actual stages and the tray spacing. Additional height is needed at the top and bottom end of the tower as well as for internal hardware. Tray pressure drop and down comer backup. Tray pressure drop and down comer backup are other important tray design parameters. After tray panel layout parameters have been fixed, estimate the tray pressure drop. The calculated pressure drop should be within allowable limit. Some process applications require low pressure drop tray. For other applications, normal tray is acceptable. Check the application requirement and redesign the tray panel layout to reduce the pressure drop if necessary. The head of liquid is required to make the liquid to flow from the tray above to the tray below. This head of layer liquid in the downcomer is called downcomer backup. This is shown in the figure below. The downcomer backup calculation will tell you whether the downcomer design is acceptable. If the downcomer backup is more, the tray panel has to be redesigned. Finally, check the tray design for weeping and entrainment. Weeping is an important factor from column turn down point of view. At reduced flow, weeping will result in lower efficiency. Entrainment is checked at rated capacity. Higher entrainment will lead to drop in tray efficiency. If the weeping and entrainment are within acceptable limit, tray panel layout is approved as final. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.